From above, Baghdad seems to be a city like any other, far removed from the violence of the past nine years. But sometimes the traces of war have a human face. On every street corner, you glimpse black silhouettes. These are the widows of Iraq. In a country haunted by war, no one takes any notice of these living ghosts. There are more than a million widows in Iraq, with almost 400,000 in Baghdad alone. Tradition dictates that these widows be taken in by their husband's family. Um Barek and her children live with 24 people in 50 square meters. We use these blankets as a bed. We have a gas stove to keep warm, and we eat here. In this time of conflict, when people are already struggling to cope, a widow is often a burden on her husband's family. Left to fend for herself, Um Barek raises her children alone in this tiny room. Which is bigger, the earth or the sun? What about the stars? Are they bigger than the sun? What is it like living here? What do you think? We live on top of each other. It's very hard for us. Ask them. They have no freedom. No one here is free. Not my husband's family, not us. We're suffocating. Power cuts and water shortages are a daily reality for Umbarek. Her husband was kidnapped and killed six years ago. Since then, she receives only $300 every two months. It seems there's no chance for a better life. There's barely enough to give her sons an occasional treat. Do you want a fruit juice? Are you sure? Is state aid enough? $300 isn't enough for one month. It doesn't matter who you are. $300 wouldn't be enough for a week even, and I have to make it last for two months. In an attempt to find a solution to her problems, Umbarek regularly goes to the education center for widows. Around 30 women get together there each week. Today, this young woman from the center has handed out a questionnaire about religious tolerance. Don't copy, answer the questions yourself. But their attention soon returns to their daily lives. All of this is the government's fault. The government has no respect for widows. What are we supposed to do with $300 every two months or if we get nothing like this lady here? How much do members of parliament get? Do they think about what women have to endure in our society when they lose their husbands? These are mothers after all. It is up to you, humanitarian organizations, to find a solution for us widows. We're not from the government. We're a humanitarian association, so you can speak freely. This center is one of the few places where these women can express themselves. It's a much needed outlet in a society where widows are often mistreated by their husbands' families. Couldn't you make meat patties, snacks, kebab and sell them? You really think I could do that? My husband's family would never allow it. Impossible. I'm telling you. Sister, don't let them push you around. Let me speak, let me speak. If you won't stand up to your husband's family, you might as well resign yourself to your fate. It's up to you to change things. You're the one who's got them into bad habits. You're afraid of them. If this carries on, you and your children will be doomed. Yes, I'm already doomed anyway. No, don't say that. You mustn't say that. It's the truth. That's my everyday life. You know me and you can all testify to that. In Iraq, the position of women, especially widows, has steadily deteriorated in recent years. Here's another reality for the widows of Iraq, Al-Wafa camp to the east of Baghdad. It is home to some 750 refugees, mainly widows, forced to flee the violence of the civil war between Sunnis and Shiites. Without their husbands, these women manage as best they can. 
The Iraqi government has promised to rehouse them, but since the camp was set up five years ago, no member of parliament or minister has set foot here. Just a few organisations like the International Committee of the Red Cross regularly visit the camp, which was set up with the support of local associations. Marta Pavlak is in charge of a microcredit programme for widows. Accompanied by an interpreter, she's here to meet programme beneficiaries, like Sahar. OK. A few months ago, this widow received a microcredit loan of $1,200 to open a small shop. Butter and cheese? Marta Pavlak is here to offer Sahar advice about how to manage her new business. Can you tell me approximately what is your monthly income? I earn about 10 to 15 dollars a day. Which means you earn around 350 dollars a month. Yes, about that. Sahar was turned away by her husband's family and had to flee. Overnight, she found herself responsible for providing for her family. One day, he was kidnapped and disappeared. After her husband's death, she was forced to seek refuge in the camp. She had no work and no money. Today, she earns enough to provide for her family's daily needs. Sahar manages really well, which is why we want her to set an example to other women. We'd like her to share her experience and encourage our future beneficiaries to open their own businesses here. And tell me, Zahar, if you could pass a message to the women the, who are willing to open a shop, what would be your message that you would like to pass to them? I'd tell them to do the same work as me because I'm able to earn a living and keep my children close to me. Sahar is an example to many, but there are others in the camp who feel utterly abandoned. What about us? Don't we matter? Why do you only help them? Who are you anyway? It's a program for widows. Well, then you should be helping me. Are you a widow? Yes, I'm a widow and I have ten children. What is it like living here? We place ourselves in God's hands. But how can we put up with such a place? Does the government spare a thought for all these orphans? Does the government not help you? Allah helps us. God is great. He's the only one we can count on. Look at all these children. Why aren't they entitled to have what others have? Who do you give the money to? Why not them? If you don't come, who will bear witness to what happens here? The camp resembles an open-air prison. Guards keep watch night and day. In Iraq, the disappearance of men from families exacerbates the dangers faced by the women left behind, particularly young women who are exposed to the perils of the streets. Many of these young women are forced into prostitution. The trafficking of these women does not seem to be a priority for the government. What's more, political support for their cause is hard to come by. The Minister for Women's Affairs recently issued a disheartening statement. In a newspaper interview, she confirmed that she was against equality between men and women and in favour of men controlling women. Despite repeated interview requests, the minister refused to see us. Hannah Edouard is a respected human rights activist. She speaks out against another form of sexual abuse suffered by these widows at the hands of religious groups. They use these women for what they call pleasure marriages. This is actually prostitution dressed up as temporary marriages. The widows are put under enormous psychological and social pressure. These women could make a useful contribution to society if only the authorities would take the trouble to train them to do a dignified job. But for that, there would need to be a real political commitment in Iraq. Sadar city is one of Baghdad's districts worst affected by the civil war. Efforts are now being made to help widows here. At the municipal council, 90 of them are to receive extra help, a cheque for $100 from the Red Cross. In front of Marta Pavlak, the council chairman puts on a good show. 
It's clear that state aid is not enough for a family to live on. We at the municipal council try to do our best. It's up to the Ministry for Social Affairs to do the rest. We would like to see state aid reach $500 a month to enable these women to provide for their families. Fine words, but will they translate into action? While waiting to find out, the Red Cross does its best to cope with the ever-growing numbers of widows in need. Standing before the 90 women, Marta is keen to open up the session in Arabic. Good morning. My name is Marta Pavlak, and I'm in charge of the Red Cross program for widows in Iraq. I am very happy to be here with you today. <laughs> We will register each woman who will receive a leaflet like this, explaining all the stages of the registration process and the ICRC support. So it will be a kind of passport. We also fill in a questionnaire so we can enter the data in our database, which will enable us to prepare the checks that will be paid to them in a few weeks' time. How did your husband die? From illness? It will take time to help these women. Outside, widows, young and old alike, wait their turn. Even if the conflict in Iraq is less intense than it was, the attacks have never stopped. Since 2003, at least one woman in ten has lost her husband to the conflict. Once the violence subsides, Iraq's next challenge will be a social one.